Hey everyone, welcome back. You know, when it comes to medical lab results, accuracy is everything, right? Absolutely. They're the foundation for making the right diagnosis and treatment decision. Exactly. But sometimes, I got to be honest, I get a little tripped up on the whole quality control versus quality assurance thing. Yeah, I can see how those terms could be confusing. They sound so similar. Right. So today, we're diving deep into QC and QA in the medical lab. We're going to break it all down so you'll never mix them up again. It's more than just definitions, though. We'll really be exploring how these two concepts work together to make sure your lab results are top-notch, something you can trust completely. Perfect. Let's jump right in. Okay, first up, quality control, or QC. We know it's all about the instruments and equipment working right, but can you give us a picture of how that actually plays out in a busy lab? Well, think of it like this. Every single piece of equipment, and I mean everything, from the simplest pipette to those big, complex analyzers, it all has to be calibrated and checked and checked regularly. So kind of like when you're baking, you got to make sure your measuring cups and spoons are accurate, right? Exactly. But uh, obviously the stakes are a bit higher when we're talking about patient health. Yeah, no kidding. So it's not just a one-time check at the beginning of the day, right? Right. It's a continuous process. And there are different ways labs do this. One tool they use are these things called Levy Jennings charts. They help track an instrument's performance over time. Oh, I've heard of those, but I don't really know how they work. What makes them so useful for the lab technicians? Well, they're really visual. You can think of them almost like a, a heartbeat monitor, but for the lab equipment. They plot control data points over time, and that way technicians can quickly see if there are any trends or sudden shifts that could mean there's a problem with the instrument. That's pretty cool. It's like having an early warning system. Exactly. And to interpret these charts, they use something called Westgard rules. These rules help them decide whether a result is valid, or if the instrument needs to be recalibrated. It's all about being proactive. Wow, I'm starting to see how much detail goes into this. Yeah. So QC, that's our daily detective work, making sure each tool is sharp and ready to go. But now we have quality assurance or QA. Isn't that kind of the same thing, just a different name? Not really. See, QA, it takes a wider view. It looks at the entire testing process from the second a sample enters the lab all the way to the final result going out. Okay, so it's really about the whole journey of that sample. Exactly. It's about making sure that every single step, every procedure, and every person involved, that they're all playing their part in getting those accurate and reliable results. So if QC is like making sure each burner on the stove works, QA is making sure the whole kitchen runs smoothly. That means the recipes are right, the chefs are trained, the whole nine yards. Oh, you got it. And you know, those recipes you mentioned, in the lab we call those standard operating procedures or SOPs, they're basically detailed instructions for every single process. Right, because you can't have one chef adding a pinch of this and another chef adding a dash of that. It has yeah. to be precise. Precisely. QA makes sure everyone's following those SOPs to the letter, no shortcuts. And it's also about constantly looking for ways to do things even better. So QA is kind of like the quality manager then, always looking for ways to improve things, streamline things. You could say that. It's all about continuous improvement. Yeah. A lot of labs use things like Lean Six Sigma, which helps streamline processes and eliminate any waste. There's also FMEA. FMEA? What's that? Failure Modes and Effects Analysis. It's a way to, you know, identify and get rid of potential risks before they even become problems. It's like a risk management for the lab. Okay, so we got QC focused on the tools and QA on the whole process. I think I'm getting it, but can we break it down even more just to be super clear? Yeah, let's do that. How about we do like a side-by-side -side comparison? Kind of like um, one of those tables you see. Sure, a table would be a great way to lay it all out. Perfect. All right, so feature by feature. First up, scope. QC, it's all about making sure the instruments are precise and the equipment is working right. On the other side, we have QA, which is looking at the big picture, the entire testing process from A to Z. Exactly. And then we have timing. QC is done every day, every time a test is run. QA, on the other hand, that's an ongoing thing, a long-term commitment to constantly improving the system as a whole. Got it. Now let's talk goals. So QC, its goal is to catch any errors right away and make sure each test is accurate. QA is aiming for that long-term reliability, constantly making the whole process better. Yep. And lastly, we have responsibility. Technicians and technologists, they're the ones on the front lines with QC. But QA, that's a team effort. Everyone in the lab, from the managers to the staff, they all have a role to play. That table really makes it clear. But, you know, sometimes I still get a little fuzzy on it. Can you give us a real-world example of how QC would catch something that maybe QA missed? Hmm. Let me think. 
Okay, imagine a technician is doing a blood glucose test. Now, QC is going to ensure that the glucose meter is properly calibrated and giving accurate readings for that specific test. Right, making sure that meter is spot on. Right. But let's say, hypothetically, the lab recently switched to a new batch of testing regions, a new lot. And let's say this new lot, without anyone knowing, it's interfering with the instrument and causing the readings to be consistently lower than they should be. Ah, so the individual tests might look okay because the meter itself seems fine. Yes. And that's where QA steps in. By looking at the overall trends and patient results over time, they'd be able to pick up on this issue. Even though the individual QC checks on the meter itself say it's working fine, QA is seeing a bigger picture. Wow, that's a really good example. And but wouldn't preventing that kind of error be part of QA's job too? Absolutely. Ideally, QA should be touching these things before they even have a chance to impact patient results. They do this by carefully checking and validating any new batches of reagents before they're used for actual testing. So like a double check, a safety net. Exactly. They compare the new batch to the old one, making sure there aren't any big differences in how they perform. That way, they can catch those sneaky problems before they affect the results. So it's like a multi-layered defense system. QC is right there on the front lines catching individual errors, while QA is working behind the scenes to strengthen the whole system and prevent those errors from even happening. I like that analogy. And it's this teamwork between QC and QA that ultimately builds trust between patients and healthcare providers. It gives everyone confidence that the results are accurate and reliable. You know, it makes you think what other industries could benefit from such a thorough system. Oh, tons. I mean, think about manufacturing, food production, aviation, even software development. Any field where quality and reliability are paramount, they can all learn from the principles of QC and QA. Yeah, you're right. It really shows how important these concepts are. So, just to sum it all up, QC is all about making sure the tools are accurate, and QA is ensuring the entire process is reliable. They work together hand-in-hand -hand behind the scenes to make sure we get the results we need. And most importantly, they allow us to have confidence in those results, the products, the systems, everything we rely on every day. That is a great point to end on. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you all learned something new and interesting today. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing. See you next time.